Hello everyone, welcome to today's MCQ's practice session from the subject Oral Pathology in Medicine. Let's start the today's practice session. Three-year-old child having vesiculating painful ulcers. There is also oral temperature of 103 for a night since three days and lymphadenopathy. The most likely diagnosis is major rectus ulcers, primary herpetic gingivostomatitis, herpes zoster, ANOG. Since the patient is 3 years old and vesiculating painful ulcers associated with the temperature rise, that could be primary herpetic gingivostomatitis. Herpes simplex, an acute infectious disease, is probably the most common viral disease affecting human. And this is most commonly seen in children below 5 years of age. As per the question, it is a 3 year old child, so it is a primary infection. The lesion as seen in the color plate was present in the oral cavity since birth. What can be the diagnosis? It is seen in the buccal mucosa and it is a white spongy nevus. It is a benign lesion as it was seen since birth. This mucosal abnormality is congenital in many instances. In other cases it does not appear until infancy. This may be widespread often involving the cheeks, palate, gingiva, floor of the mouth and portions of the tongue. There is sometimes a minimal amount of folding present. And this can be removed sometimes by gentle rubbing without any ensuing bleeding. Although the etiology of recurrent aphthous ulceration is unknown, which of the following are thought to be associated with aphthous ulceration? Multiple responses are correct. Etiology of recurrent aphthous ulceration is unknown. Stress is uh, associated. Hematinic deficiencies, this is also associated. Family history could be associated and HIV we cannot say but let's see in aphthous may be seen in HIV infections also. I'm going with all the four and that is correct. Let's see if there is any ex explanation given. The cause of recurrent aphthous ulceration is unknown, but several associations have been made. Stress, hematinic deficiencies, and a family history all predispose a patient to getting apt. The ulcers also occur in HIV infections, being more severe in the more immunocompromised cases. Smoking is not associated with aphthous. In fact, patients who do not smoke or who have recently stopped smoking are more likely to suffer which of the following lesion will have high tissue characteristic in T2 weighted MRI process? Odontogenic myxoma, osteoma, osteoblastoma and odontoma. High tissue characteristic in T2 weighted MRI process, odontogenic myxoma. This question can be answered logically. MRI is principally used to differentiate the soft tissue growths. Among the options, odontogenic myxoma is the lesion which has predominantly soft tissue components within the lesion. Remaining all are bone or calcified growths. Osteoma, osteoblastoma and odontoma all are bony or calcified growths whereas the odontogenic myxoma is a soft tissue growth. So, supernumerated teeth are seen in all of the following except in cleft palate, cleidocranial dysostosis, ectodermal dysplasia, Gardner syndrome. In cleidocranial dysostosis, there can be supernumerary teeth. Ectodermal dysplasia, mostly hypodontia is present, not supernumerary teeth are present. So, yes, ectodermal dysplasia, anodontia is seen instead. Most common is major dense supernumerary teeth occurring between the maxillary central incisors. Maxillary fourth molar is the second most common. You see rest of the explanation. 
which is a common complaint of patients who present with large torus palatinus. Rapid growth, bulk reaches downward, soreness and or pain due to trauma, pale appearance of overlying tissue. Large torus palatinus, soreness and pain due to trauma is the only complaint, otherwise it is harmless. The static bone cyst is a cyst developing from Everent salivary gland in the mandible, tissue of the odontogenic apparatus, tissue of the oral mucosa, arteriovenous malformations in the bone. A static bone cyst is developing from the everent salivary gland in the mandible. You please go through the explanation yourself. You can pause this video and read the explanation. Which slow-growing neoplasm composed mainly of cementum-like tissue manifests as a bulbous growth attached to the apex of a permanent tooth root? Which slow-growing neoplasm? Hypercementosis, sclerosing ostitis, cemental dysplasia, benign cementoblastoma. It is mentioned neoplasm. So. Benign cementoblastoma should be the answer. Benign cementoblastoma is a slow-growing neoplasm composed mainly of cementum-like tissue that manifests as a bulbous growth attached to the apex of a permanent tooth root. Onion peel appearance is seen in Ewing sarcoma, Gary's osteomyelitis, none of the above, both of the above. Onion peel appearance it is seen in both Ewing sarcoma and Gary's osteomyelitis. A fit and well 14 year old adolescent girl has a well circumscribed brown pigmented area on her lower lip. She says that it is unchanged since she noticed it two years ago. Clinically it is an isolated lesion flushed with the labial mucosa and measuring 3 into 2 mm in size. What is the single most likely diagnosis? Well circumscribed brown pigmented area. It can be melanotic macule. Melanotic macules are caused by localized benign increase in melanin by basal melanocytes. They are commonly found on the lips and are size less than 1 cm. This is an idiopathic oral melanotic macule. And for the rest of the options, the uh, explanation is given. You please read it yourself. Immature bony trabeculae are found in Immature bony trabeculae It is found in fibrous dysplasia The most common site of osteosarcoma of head and neck region It is the mandible I am moving fast Most common benign tumor of oral cavity It is the fibroma Fibroma is a connective tissue tumor. You go through this. Okay. Which of the following is wrong about keratocyst? Has low recurrence rate, has low protein content, has high recurrence rate. Keratocyst do have high recurrence rate. C is correct. So this cannot be the option. In D it is mentioned B and C. So D also cannot be the option. And this is contradictory to this C. So this is the wrong one, yes. For myositis ossificans, main cause is trauma, no. Myositis ossificans, let's see, it is trauma only, yeah. Myositis ossificans is a disease of unknown etiology characterized by formation of fibrous tissue and bone within interstitial tissues of muscle, tendons, fascia, ligaments, aponeurosis and even the skin. Most cases of myositis ossificans occur as a result of trauma and thus the main demographic is young adults. Peridombok syndrome is associated with hemifacial atrophy. Hemifacial atrophy, originally described by Perry and Hanok Romberg, consists of a slowly progressive atrophy of the soft tissues of the essentially half of the face. The clinical features are also mentioned here. It's quite a long explanation. 
and this is the face of a peridromboc syndrome patient acute infection of bacteria which affects the nervous system is tetanus okay it affects the nervous system we have a pretty criteria for the enamel hypoplasia and deciduous teeth are all except sensitivity four simer spots are seen in it is seen in rubella biopsy of a clinically suspicious lesion is negative the most appropriate treatment is tell patient no malignancy repeat the biopsy repeat the biopsy should be done okay if the lesion is clinically suspicious and even if the biopsy is negative we need to repeat the biopsy atrophy of papilla of tongue is due to deficiency of tongue papillae is atrophied in cases of zinc deficiency acrodermatitis enteropathica is a specific multi organ disorder resulting from zinc deficiency and different symptoms are given ground glass appearance in bone is commonly seen in hyperparathyroidism fibrous dysplasia condensing osteitis both a and b in both hyperparathyroidism and fibrous dysplasia ground glass appearance is seen and the answer is both a and b thrombocytopenia is seen in which of the following syndromes thrombocytopenia is seen in wiscott elridge syndrome wiscott elridge syndrome is an x linked recessive genetic condition with the explanation ptca gene in drosophila pass gene mutation is seen in all of the following except ptca gene gorlin golds neboid basal cell carcinoma bifid reed and squamous cell carcinoma in squamous cell carcinoma it is not seen Adenoid cystic carcinoma is also known as adenoid cystic carcinoma its other name is cylindroma is a type of adenocarcinoma which occurs in the 5th and 6th decades of life most common intraoral navy is intramucosal there are four different types of navy is mentioned junctional compound and blue navy mumps is caused by paramyxovirus which is a rna virus mumps and measles are caused by paramyxo rna virus picona virus that causes polio is also a rna virus Herpes, pox, Adeno, Papova, these all are DNA viruses. That's all for today's practice session. We'll meet you again in the next video. Thanks for watching. Stay subscribed.